Okay, okay, family followers. It's your brother EB, Success After Lockdown. We have Sister Sarita with us today from Sarita Talks. And we have um, a guest. So um, I sp this is my first time speaking with this guest. Just a couple of minutes ago, me and her had a nice conversation. Mm. And um, I want our followers to meet her and know her. Um, Miss Stacy Burnett. Nice to have you on today. Stacy, hey. Thanks for having me, Eric. We definitely appreciate you being here today. Uh, um, so what we want to do is, you know, first just get a, a, a understanding of who Stacy is, where Stacy come from, your, your upbringing. Grew up in a one parent home. How was it? Where'd you grow up? How was life? So I grew up in the Hudson Valley, part of New York, um, and I couldn't wait to get out of that small town. And I immediately, uh, as soon as I was 18, took off and uh, I lived all over. Uh, I used to go to like other countries and stay there until I overstayed my visa. And then they threw me out and then I'd just find another one that would take me. Okay. Uh, why not? And um, uh but it was a pretty normal, uh, I mean, we, we were, um, it was a two, two family household. Um, you know, and my, my parents weren't, um, I mean, they were good people. They, they weren't very sophisticated people. My dad like sold fish at a grocery store and my mom would babysit kids for extra money in the household. So, um, it was a big deal when like we got real health insurance instead of Medicaid. Like I didn't know that, you know, there was a, they difference. have a different type of sophistication. Yeah. They, exactly. Yeah. They have a different kind of smart survival institute. You know what I'm Nicely saying? Like put. these kids did not need health insurance, but they're getting to the age. Something might get broke. Yeah. But, but you know what, you know, the, the, despite the, I mean, obviously you're selling fish in a grocery store, babysitting kids. Um, you know, my parents managed to own their own house, even nice. with that um, lack of, of income. Like the times were just different. And we had a new car every, I mean, granted, they were like Ford Escorts. Uh, when we were really rolling in the money, we got a Mercury Lynx. Like, okay. <laughs> we, we upgraded there. Um, but uh but they had a new car every couple of years. And I just think like, wow, people today on minimum wage, that's not happening. Mm -hmm. um, so it was a very different time. It, it was easier. To be poor. It was much easier to be poor then. Um, yeah. And then I, I wound up um, in my thirties going to prison and um, really, I, I mean, I, 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 had bipolar disorder my i had to go off medication when i was pregnant and then suddenly um i i was doing really dumb things uh, <laughs> and i wound up going to prison uh for i got a 5 to 15 uh for basically like bad checks cuz you know i thought i was going to win the lottery um so it didn't matter just I mean, whole big story there, but that's the crux of it. And then I couldn't get out of the system. I kept violating parole and going back. So I didn't actually get off of parole until 2023. And so when did you I heard you correctly. Hmm? Uh, when did Sarita. you catch the case? What year? I caught the case in 2008 or seven. Wow. 2007. And if I heard you correctly, you said at 30? Yeah. Well, I'm 50 now, but... Um, so, so, so at 30, any time before that, how was your teenage years growing up? Was, did you have a, because I, it's, it's just a, like a little surprising to me because most people I, I talk with, like they start at the teenage years or, you know, early twenties, you know, when you said right. at 30, this happened. Fair point. But like, you got to remember small town, right? Mm -hmm. Upstate New York. Um, classic Gen X background, wood parties, um, uh, lots of drinking, lots of, of, you know, irresponsible kid stuff, lots of benign neglect, all those, you know, all those things. Uh, it was totally normal for us to leave the house at, you know, as soon as the sun came up and then just be back before the streetlights were on kind of thing. Right. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Um, 
so even though we were doing things that today you wouldn't get away with for five seconds um it was just like rite of passage stuff yeah right you know let me just ask you real quick so you say upstate new york was the community or the people you went to school with did they all have a little money or were they established mostly i grew up in saugerties right. it was a, a little bit of um a dumpster fire back then now it's like super cute they it's it's really nice but we all thought that we were better than the people in kingston like we were we believed that we were better than the people in kingston like um you know oh our teachers would tell us like if make sure you write your Saugerties high school student on there because they'll look at your application as opposed to kingston and which is a thing yeah well it took me like 30 years of living this life to understand that really what they were saying is Saugerties is white and Kingston is black. And so uh, like we didn't have any people of color in our school. I think we got our first, you know, black student when I was like 15. Like we didn't, so we weren't like yeah. all theoretical, you know? Uh. So, so had I been in Kingston, though, doing typical teenage stuff of like drinking and staying out and stuff, I probably would have been caught up in the system. I guarantee you, because just, you know, the suburbs look different than like a small city. And the, the um, so all of those problems, like when Rodney King happened, um, mm -hmm. we were like that, like. We, we were like spectators. And it was like, wow, this stuff happens, right? Right? Yeah, I like, like that would never happen in our town. And then mm -hmm. it wasn't until I was much older that I was like, yeah, because we don't have any black people. <laughs> of course right. it wouldn't happen in our town. So it just seemed like really far away. But if you just went 10 miles down the road to Kingston, that was, was a different world. Day. I just want to ask you this, if growing up and feeling like you, you know, your parents weren't sophisticated or that you were poor and everybody else had money, which is really like a mental health issue in itself, that you are young and you realize other kids have things that you don't. Do you feel like that had anything to do with writing checks? Oh, sure, I do. Um, I mean, mm. it wouldn't surprise like, yeah, you're probably right. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, when you also grow up with a scarcity mindset, which we had, mm -hmm. um, it definitely, you, you definitely get wired up differently. I mean, like, I'm not a neurologist by a long shot, but, but I do think that those chronic stressors and living in an environment where, um, like, we never had our lights go out, like, our parents always paid those bills, but there was always a risk. Like you knew not to ask for stuff because if you wanted, um, you know, new shoes for to start the school year with that, that you better, um, you know, like help out, turn the lights off. Like, I don't know, we never had to worry about things like, like that, but our parents let us know that they worried about stuff like that. And then yeah. you go to the, to your friends' houses, um, and their dads all work at IBM and their moms all stay home and like knit doilies and shit all day. And um, not our life. Um, right. And I remember the first time I sat in a car with leather seats, I was like, what is this? Like, it's leather. Sliding, cool. sliding back and forth, like, ooh, palatial. This is nice. <laughs> right. Right, but my friends never made me feel less than, but I definitely noticed that disparity for sure. Oh, so it's um, amazing to me how you know how um how we have these like interactions um and we can we can all look at in our youth or when we growing up and we have these friends because I also had that that friend or two or three that had mm -hmm. more than than me and and I knew it going into their house and like wow mm -hmm. they got this and they had the car they had this. It's, it's just amazing to me that you share that story um, yeah. when it seemed like you were, you know, well, you know, I could say like well off in terms of your, 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 your parents made sure they had that car. They made sure, you know uh -huh. what I'm saying? They had the home for you and things like that. So it's just amazing that you shared that. Yeah. Yeah. So I want to know a little bit about, so you start making super bad decisions and it leads to prison. Were there drugs involved? No, well, just the checks, just the checks. That yeah, because a lot of people don't realize money is here is the worst addiction that I feel like people just don't realize how bad it can get. 
gambling. There's no other place where you can lose your house in five minutes. You cannot smoke enough crack. You cannot shoot enough dope. You cannot sniff enough powder. You can never smoke a house payment or a house, a hundred thousand dollars in like that. So the love of money. The crackhead might disagree, Sarita. I'm oh just my saying. God, I'm just saying. But I, know, I understand. It, it, first of all, where would you find the pipe big enough to put a hundred thousand dollars worth of crack on it? That's a, listen. Speaking from experience, I would be scared. Regardless, gambling is, I believe, one of the worst addictions because it is fueled by finance. It is fueled by money. So that's why I want to. This is my word. I'm, I'm having my son use. I want to hearken back to the conversation about growing up and feeling as though people didn't have a lot because that puts us in a mindset. Mm -hmm. And then also when you get to the point where everybody's like, Oh, the love of money, because, and that is what the Bible says, but the Bible also says money is a protection. That's why your lights weren't off. That's why your dad sold fish. That's why your mom was babysitting. But as we get older and we start seeing these things and, you know, we're making bad decisions and we've got a credit card or we've got some checks and, you know, and you grew up, as you said, with a scarcity mindset. So I, I mean, I can, I can feel where you're coming from just through conversations of how growing up and looking at other people have things is it, it does something to you.